Guess what? That's right, another episode of Jubal Life TV is coming to you right now, so do not touch that dial. Well, do people- can you even say that saying anymore? Don't touch the dial, because people don't really have dials anymore. I don't know. Hmm. Well, let's kick the news off right away with a system update that everybody- Well, no one likes a system update. Who- who- who likes system updates? No one likes system updates. When the system update comes out, it's just like, Oh my god! The world's gonna end! Holy crap! Oh my god! Am I gonna be able to jump my Pokemon? Am I gonna be able to play Rising Ruby and Sinking Sapphire and minimize my games and do all this other crazy crap? And oh my god! Oh my god! Which is promptly why I made my video last night addressing this update, 10.4, uh... Oh my god, the 3DS update. Everybody panic! Which, if you're interested in that, you can click right over here-ish. Or just, just go in the card up here. There should be a card. Fuck! Damn! Yeah, so if you want to check that out, I do go over briefly the system update that Nintendo released pretty recently, which addresses some issues, not, uh, I, I guess, backdoor entrances to homebrew and get all that type of cool stuff that is pre-mentioned in my exaggerated monologue yes so with that being said i did find a thread from someone in the comment section so thank you whoever uh, did link that um to gba temp the cyberquake actually addressed every pretty much method that you could want with homebrew i will uh, put that on the screen right now right there and that's pretty cool so you can take a look at that and according to him browser hacks on the old 3ds is completely 100 percent working which is cool and i said in my video that i mentioned before that it is not working or it's not 100% um that's just that personally that is just speaking from my experience I could not get it to work and Smalem who is a very very well you know highly touted person in this homebrew hacking whatever you want to call it community he also has concerns about it as well and cannot 100% confirm it so with that being said tread with caution and with this new update um as I posted on the side of the video here if there's another method that you use, be sure to look on there before you continue with whatever update you are doing. If you're doing ninja hacks, uh, in my video that I mentioned before that I made, I do address that as well. Rumble World, a spin-off game, has just released on retail in Europe, and this game you may be familiar with. It is a free-to-download, free-to-play game with microtransactions, something that Game Freak and, well, I mean, I guess just Pokemon as a whole, has been uh, not shying away from recently. But yes, due to its popularity, Rumble World just got a retail release in Europe, and that will have all the microtransactions preloaded and all that type of good stuff. So you will get, let me get this, 3,000 Poké Diamonds, and you get the Poké Diamond Mine for free. And that means you can get Poké Diamonds every day. So if you like Rumble World and you, you waste a lot of money on there for some reason, well, I guess there's a solution for you now. A few episodes back, you may remember that I mentioned the 2016 January International Battle Competition craziness. Yeah, uh, yes. That is now, registration for that has begun, so if you're interested in that, you heard me mention in episode 1, you can register, all the information for it will be down below, as will all links to today's stories, I will leave those down below. But yes, so that will be a double battle competition using current VGC rules, and that will also allow you to use two box legendary Pokemon, which I will put, uh, with those Pokemon that are on the screen right now. Yay! So, registration runs from January 21st until January 28th, and since it's being posted on the 23rd, you still have a few days if you want to make up your mind and you want to register all that type of cool stuff. Details will be linked down below. You guys remember those red, blue, yellow, awesome, cool, whatever, virtual console, remake, reboot, whatever, whatever you call them? Well, those, the manuals for them are now online, and we have some cool little nuggets of information, mostly about the online kind of functionality with it. First of all, the Virtual Console has a restore point functionality to it, so you can kind of like, on an emulator, you could kind of do like save states, kind of like that, so, um, originally they were going to use the restore point feature like every other console, Virtual Console game they have, but they have recently stripped this feature, likely to prevent the cloning of Pokemon, because you can restore point and trade, and then you still have it, and, you know, that type of stuff. So, I guess they're afraid, and, I mean, yeah, no, no one's gonna hack into the game and clone. No, no one's gonna do that. No, there's no current methods, and... Yeah, okay, good try. Anyway, also, 
couple little things. You can also not access the virtual console or home menu while battling, trading, or, you know, online functionality, that type of stuff. You can't get out of the menu while you're doing that, so, um... You know, that's a little piece of information, and also a little bit of information about how you can actually battle and trade. Once you'll join the Cable Club, that's how it originally was at the original games, you will have a menu actually pop up on the touch screen. So you will have some options, kind of like instructions, whatever. Um, you know, just like on the normal games, the newer games where you have the touch screen where, you know, you, you know, you send a signal to the other person. And there are a few different options on there. If you want to check out more information about it, uh, the, like the specific messages it'll send, link to the story, like I said, is down below. But nothing really crazy, just cable club and you have a menu on the touch screen. Yay. And last, but probably least, we have more movies that Pokemon is going to be releasing and, you know, whatever. So... In addition to remastering the three first three movies, digitally remastering and releasing all that type of good stuff, they are also going to be releasing a metric fuck ton of their movies on platforms like iTunes and Amazon Video and Google Play and blah 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 in North America and parts of Europe. So, said metric fuck ton will be posted on the screen right now. Woohoo! Now on to our community spotlight, today we have Jakov, and this guy is an awesome Poketuber and he deserves a lot more support with all the effort that he puts into his videos. And there you will find pretty much daily videos with some really cool stuff on his channel. Right now he has a few active series, he has a Vault Way 2 chain lock, a Alps Affair egg lock, and an X and Y cage lock co-op with Super Lugia. So a lot of cool stuff over there, some top fives, I saw a few on there, and just really some high quality content. He uses a capture card, some really nice looking layout. Out, and he's just a funny dude overall so please check out his link down below like I said he deserves the support and that's what this spotlights all about just trying to show you some awesome people who you may not know about and well go check his link out down below and with that on to our next segment all right welcome to the interview portion everybody and today I have the amazing awesome twitch streamer himself Sean his name is Houndoomed, or uh, Houndoomed, and his name is Sean. There you go. How's it going, man? <laughs> nice one. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm happy, uh, you know, here and about to interview you. So, anyway, yes, I have some good questions for you today. Are you Are you Reggie? I guess how I, that's how I should ask a Twitch streamer. Are you Reggie? <laughs> yeah, I am Reggie. Let's do All it. All right, sweet. So, uh, first one is a Twitch-based question. I think you'll like this one. What is your favorite part about live streaming on Twitch? Well, I think, to be honest, you'll probably end up getting the same answer out of most streamers, but for me, it's like, it's a great way to meet people. Like, as someone who isn't particularly social in real life, it's, I like being friends with everyone, but I can't be bothered going out and meeting people. <laughs> so it's nice to, um, be in a place where you're kind of because I mean I'm my my th thought process is I'm going to be sitting here playing games anyway so if I can do the exact same thing but then also make friends while I'm doing it then why the heck not so it's a nice way to make friends while still doing the things that I love so that was kind of the motivation for starting and it's kind of basically been my motivation throughout so it's it's all just been about kind of like maintaining a social atmosphere and just having a stream that I feel like I'm proud of and it, it, it feels more right than doing YouTube because YouTube is a bit more kind of sterile almost where it's kind of it is what it is you just do it you make a video and that's it there's kind of no real interaction whereas on Twitch it's very different and it's kind of you speak to people and you know you have lots of fun and it, it's just it's just much nicer to do twitch and to have fun yeah. and to interact with people yeah it's definitely interesting i know uh, episode one of this uh i was asking a similar question to jpp and uh like uh, it was something like what makes twitch so special or different or whatever because he's been getting a lot more into it recently and you yeah. know he said that youtube and youtube is great in a, a bunch of different ways and it's like apples and oranges really but um with twitch you get a much more direct like you know feedback you know it's like yeah. a video you know you may get a hundred comments in like a year or whatever with twitch it's like you may get like a hundred lines of people in like 30 seconds a minute or two minutes whatever you know and it's it's awesome yeah. it's certainly a lot different and it's better for interaction yeah so definitely all right cool so we now have 20 years of 
Pokemon. And uh, a few of these questions are definitely going to be based off of that. I think it's a good way to base a question off of, honestly. So yeah. what do you think Pokemon should do for their 20th anniversary? So far, they've done a few things like remastering movies and spin-off games. Even though we've known about them, they're still kind of making it part of their 20th anniversary bash. And uh, should they be doing more? Or do you think what they're doing and you know taking their time with a new game and all that type of stuff is the right thing to do? I'm not sure. I mean, I think that they're doing enough at the moment for the 20th anniversary. I still think that they've got more up their sleeve. I feel like they're not wanting to spoil everything until it properly happens. And then you just go, hey, yeah, we're doing this yeah, as well. I, I mean, I like the idea of red, blue and yellow going on to the, um, the virtual console. I like that. I think that that's a nice touch. I think that's a good thing for them to do. Um, although, however, I don't like the fact that we're not getting a green 2DS. <laughs> Let's point that out. Um, in terms of a new game, I like the fact they're waiting. Um, to be quite honest, I feel like while I prefer X and Y over Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I feel like X and Y kind of flopped a bit um, for the sheer reason that I always say that Gen 5 was mistakenly put on the Nintendo DS. Mm. It should, especially Black and White 2. They put Black and White 2 on the DS when it was practically dead. And yeah. they, Black and White 2 were around for, su for such a little time before they shut down the DS Wi-Fi connection as well. And it's crystal clear that they just didn't mean to put it on there. It was just a little silly. Um, and that showed when they suddenly decided, oh, well, Black and White 2 have only been out for like eight months, but we're just going to shove X and Y in your face like <laughs> right now. Or like you're just going to take it and we're going to release it and then you can just have it. And then, oh, three months after X and Y or five months, however long it was. Oh, you can have Auras now. Just just take it all. Come on. <laughs> it's like it was too rushed. X and Y, because of the fact that they needed to quickly transition onto the 3DS, X and Y felt rushed. They just looked a bit like they looked fantastic you could tell that they'd been working on the games for a long time in terms of making the games 3d and i think that showed even more in um omega ruby and alpha sapphire in terms of the basis of the game though in terms of like the story and the, the development new... yeah. yeah it just it sucked so i think that them taking their time with a new game and announcing it sometime this year is the best way to go even though i want it now <laughs> yeah so, if they wait to the 20th anniversary to say, hey, you know, Zed's coming or whatever the hell they're making, um, I, I feel that that's fine. That's perfect. Because if it means that we're going to get a much better game out of it, then so be it. All right. Yeah, I mean, hey, as a content creator and these past two episodes of Jubilee Life TV people I've seen, I get salty when Z's not in the news. But uh, that's just because I like I want a new game to play and cover. But um, I could definitely see why they would do that. What I would hope for the 20th anniversary that they do is they don't I hope they springboard off of the red blue yellow you know releases I, I hope that they yeah. use that as like momentum to do something really cool not just like that's it you know exactly. I don't want them to springboard onto Pokken from that you know <laughs> I don't want that yeah so yeah definitely all right well anyway with this 20th anniversary upon us what is your favorite memory from Pokemon after all these years that have passed us what in terms of the games or like movies it or? could be it could be a personal memory it could be a moment when you know garatina popped out and like made you like it was like a jump scare or it could be you know when you saw Arasion from the rise of dark it could be whatever whatever memory you want or we could skip and you could think about it in your head for a minute <laughs> well i don't know i think that a fair few of my favorite moments have been from streaming really um because in terms of like shiny hunting has always been some of the top highlights for me yeah especially you know in gen 2 when uh, not so much the gyarados but just finding random pokemon in the world that were shiny was just like oh well <laughs> hello <this>? there <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a gold crabby how the hell did this happen <laughs> and so i think that that's always been one of the best bits and i think that i think also another top memory for me actually it's kind of it all ties into fourth gen which i know that you'd like yeah um, this guy's awesome man platinum platinum in the distortion world was one of the best moments for me in yes. terms of the fact that graphically it looked great for the ds like not thinking about gen 5 for a minute like gen 4 really kind of made the ds look amazing because they hadn't really done that in the past and platinum really kind of set the bar high for graphics and in turn like you know nintendo has never exactly been known for their graphics but yeah. i think that they did a really good job with the distortion world 
actually making it look awesome, especially with Giratina. I think that the new form made it look really cool. I liked that. I loved it flying around the distortion world. But yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And also, I think in a similar note, in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the scene where you see the Kimono Girls with Ho and Lugia, mm -hmm. I think that's top notch. I think that they did such a great job with that, and I think that that will always be one of the top moments for me because I was like really surprised, especially considering. I'd already played Diamond and Pearl, and I'd already played Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and I was like, hmm, how are they going to make these better? And Platinum in it especially, because I didn't buy Platinum for a long time after its release. And I, as soon as I bought it, I was like, where the hell has this been all my life? Like, seriously, it was such an amazing game. <laughs> it looked great, and I love what they did with the story, and then Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver were the exact same, because it's like, I'm reliving childhood memories right now. Like, I was... I must have been eight seven no seven when i first played gold and silver and it is just amazing to suddenly like be transitioned into oh absolutely a young adult and just going oh my god this is so amazing and then also having the graphical improvement as well uh-huh but i don't like the level curve <laughs> but <laughs> that's a different story um so i think generally those are some of the best moments really um that's and great. i think i stick out and also just getting my shiny pit plumbing planet just yeah, and End of end of end of last year was just perfect because that <laughs> that Pokemon shining after such a short amount of time was like a crowning moment for my stream and for the year. That really and is. It was, it was amazing. It was one of the best feelings to know that I'd gotten such a difficult full of shiny. So I think that that also um, is probably up there as well. That is incredible. Anything with Piplup is amazing, but you throw the shiny and the full odds and just mm. exactly. That's so awesome. All right, well I got a curveball for you. As aforementioned. Pokemon will be remastering some of its movies from the franchise. What are some of your favorite Pokemon movies? And if you can, what is your favorite Pokemon movie? Well, this is an awkward question because I've only ever actually watched one of them. God damn <laughs> I, it. I was crossing my fingers. I'm like, there's like a 50-50 yeah, chance I'm, here. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I'm, I'm not a movie person, which is probably why I haven't really seen many. Ah, uh, okay. The one that I have seen is Celebi Voice of the Forest. And That's I think a that random, really... dude. You gotta go back. <laughs> well, you know, it it's pretty good. I thought that that was a really nice movie, and I cried a lot when Celebi died. But uh, oh, <laughs> just oh, you're gonna cry. So, but spoilers, yeah. by the way. But um, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so it was spoiler free zone, but it, it comes back to life. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, no, I think that that was. I think that that was a really good. And frankly, if you're talking about spoiler free zone, if you haven't seen that movie, go watch it because it's like I actually have not. It's a great, it's a great film. It really is. Um, so yeah, I think that that's probably one of the. Out, if I was to choose a movie, really, that would probably be the one that I'd see anyway, just because I love Celebi and I like what they, I like the kind of backstory around Celebi as well. So I think that that was a, a nice movie, and I really did like it. So yeah, I mean, I've never really been kind of tempted to watch the other movies, really. I mean. Yeah. Me and Since Elliot, me and Galactic Elliot, we sat and we watched all of The Rise of Darkrai. I'm like, dude, you're going to love this movie. And he's like, I don't know. And it's like, damn it, we're watching this. And at the end, when the song Arasion played, he was like, oh my god, this is beautiful. I'm like, damn straight, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. I should watch them. I've just never really been tempted to, I totally, guess. Totally, dude. Guys, in the comment section, leave some movie suggestions, some Pokemon movie suggestions for our boy Sean here, all right? Gotta get him on that, you know? And I gotta see the Mewtwo movie. The original Mewtwo movie. Yes, you have to see that one. And the one with Lugia's song and... Mm. Oh my god. And Rise of Dark Man. Right, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. It'll be fine. Okay, so here we go. Last question. What is the best decision that Pokemon has made since you have started following the franchise? Whether it's Mega Evolution or, you know, starting a game, remaking a game, whatever it is. Making a spin-off, whatever you... Your personal experience, what has their best decision been? I don't know. I think on a slightly kind of low note, one of the best decisions they ever made was shiny locking the Pucciano at the beginning of Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That's, that's <laughs> up there. Um, generally, I know that some people hate this, and I think Sin actually hates this as well. I think that one of the best things they ever did was in Gen 4, there's a theme running here, um, giving po old Pokemon evolutions. I do love that. I, th I, I think that that's that. one of the best mo things that they ever did because... Um, that's one of the reasons just, why I love just, it. 
it's just nice to see old Pokemon being recognized. I like I like the also that about Mega Evolutions. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like evolutions just feel better than reg than Megas. I don't know. There's just something about regular evolutions that just makes a lot of Pokemon so much cooler. Like I think there are some Pokemon that don't deserve a Mega that probably should have just gotten a regular evolution. Like mm -hmm. things like uh, Sableye, Marwile, and people are saying that they want Dunsparce to get a Mega. I'm just like, nah. <laughs> just give it an evolution. Yes. Um, and so I think that's something they need to do again in the future because I think that that was... It kind of shook everything up a bit as well because some Pokemon, especially something like Rolts evolving into Gallade, like it was yeah, such a, such a big great. change for it because it was such a... It was so different to Gardevoir. And I think that that was generally just a really, really good decision that they made. And I think that they need to kind of do that again in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I think that... I think X and Y's transition into 3D was a very good one as well. Because while it was a little late, <laughs> I think <laughs> them upgrading the graphics so much... Like it was, a, it was such a transition to go from Gen Five into Gen Six, but I think that it needed to be done for the franchise to stay not not fresh, but just like feel like it should be there because I feel like in its time. Yeah, Gen Five felt. While I love Gen Five, Gen Five is one of my favorite generations. I adore it, and I think that they certainly pushed the DS to its limits graphically, but it didn't feel right as a game to its time because it was a bit late like it was a bit tardy to the party as you americans would say it just it didn't <laughs> feel right time I'm hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't feel right being there and then as soon as you get into gen 6 it's just like yeah okay we're starting to feel a bit more a bit more like it now especially after playing gates to infinity uh, mr dungeon because that game was in 3d while gen mm -hmm. 5 was around and it's like mm, this doesn't feel like a gen 5 game this feels like later i mean it was later but it just didn't feel right being as a Gen 5 game when it looks so different graphically. I mean, does that even count? People hate that game. <laughs> well, I hate that. I hate that game as well. But I'm just yeah, no, saying, I get what you're saying. In terms of graphics, like it, it, it just feel it felt very important for them to go into X and Y and just suddenly have that massive change of graphics. Totally. Um, so yeah, I think I think generally those would probably be the best. Yeah. Thing. I, I'm just saying, like with the evolution thing, I hate to say it, I really do because I love what they did in fourth gen. I feel like we're not going to see any of that with the Mega Evolution being a thing. Mm, see, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether we're going to have... Uh, I'm, I'm questioning Megas being in the, in the next generation. Yeah. I, I mean, am. I, I would say... I don't see them really continuing it too much, too much mm -hmm. further. Interesting. I think that they're going to do that just to keep people interested. Um, you know, Mega Evolutions are a big hot button, hot button thing when like news comes out. Like, oh, Mega Leaked. Oh, my God. Blah, 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 whatever, you know. It's true. It's true. So. I don't know. I feel like they could possibly mix them together. They could possibly still have regular evolutions because I that don't know. That would be great. I'm that just, really would. I'm just not sure. I mean, I I feel like there's still the possibility in the next gen for them to possibly add like evolutionary lines to have the possibility of having four. Like it, a Pokemon can evolve three times instead of just twice. Uh -huh. I feel like there's still possibly room for that to happen. Not quite sure how they'd work it in, and if it's that would be possible. interesting. But uh, it just feels like that could possibly be a thing for the future. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's about it. Thank you, Sean, so much for coming on and answering some questions for us. You're very welcome. And with that, guys, he is a awesome Twitch streamer and does have a YouTube as well that uh, he posts let's plays and shiny highlights and all that type of good stuff. So check out his links down below and as well as our person for the community spotlight and all of the links to the news stories all that type of goodness is down in the description and uh is there anything else you want to throw in before we get out of here dude i love all of you <laughs> that'll do <laughs> thank it thank you everyone for watching all you awesome piplup people and with that we'll see you on the next episode of jubilife tv peace <laughs>